I think I had a very special childhood, actually. We would come up here early and it would be the camps building up and the guiding and the fishing and instead of being at summer camps and stuff, I would end up spending my whole summers in Angawa. At the end of the day, it was my own playground, my own summer camp. By education, by formation, I was supposed to be a phys ed teacher, but I was also very uh, attracted by the outdoors all my life. We showed up here, Pierre and I, in 1984 as a simple guides. We were already guides down south. I would qualify this type of guiding as soft compared to what we would discover coming here because we had no idea. For me, it was a total discovery because this type of guiding does not exist down south. I was the last one to come in the group of guides, so I had the last boat and the last motor. But they were my boat and my motor. I had to learn to master this river with all the respect that it needs. After a while, you get to a point where it's your boat, your motor, and it's your river too. Sam was sent to me by Emily, his mother, because I left one year and he was only four. In his child's mind, he thought it was her fault if I went away. So he was really tough on his mother, so she called me and she said, I'm sending him to you. And I had a friend from Maine coming up. He came in a Cessna 185, and he thought that he would never get in that plane. Four-year-old kid, not a word of English, with two big American guys, not a word of French and he jumped into that plane. He took off and he ended up here six hours after with a big smile. This was the start of something that was recreated every year for Sam and for Matthew. <laughs> this became their playground. They were happy here and I was in the bush with them for years. And I was told so many times by my clients, you're so lucky. You're so lucky to have your boys. Growing up in a family business, you kind of know what direction you're going to be headed into. I guess it was just natural for me, just seeing my dad and my uncle run their operation, flying with those boys around here all summer long. You know, I was three years old, flying on their knees. I guess at that point I knew that's what I wanted to do in life. I wanted to be here. I wanted to be a part of it. I was a pretty intense kid. When my dad couldn't make up with having to deal with me and the business at the same time, he would drop me off at the lake and I would be just matched up with a pilot that needed a hand for the day, you know, even though I was you know, four or five years old.
I just started flying around in the otters at that point. And I guess at this age, you don't think about those things, but it, it had something to do with me now. And I went through high school, college and everything. And at some point I just realized I was trying to open my doors, like we say in French, and trying to make sure that I would get any options available for my, my career and everything. And realize at that point that that's not what I was made for. I was just made to be out there and fly. John and I, we always wanted to be outfitters. We tried quite a few times to find a place to uh, start a brand new operation, which is very difficult when you don't have a lot of money. The bank won't give you any money because there's absolutely no guarantee whatsoever that you will be successful. I finally ended up working up north to another outfitter. And I came back in the beginning of the 80s to this place. And John came with me in 1983, and uh, we made an offer in 84, and we bought it in 85. It was based on two things, primarily Atlantic salmon and caribou hunting came after. The major thing became caribou, but this was always an operation very renowned for Atlantic salmon fishing. So I have people that are coming here for the last 30, 35, even 40 years in a row at this place. This is one of the best places for salmon fishing in the world. I just always wanted to have an outfit with log buildings and things like that. So I started learning how to build them, and after that I did build them. Buildings after buildings after buildings, I would say it took probably five years. We do have the only place in Ungava region with log cabins like that. You won't find another place like that, definitely not. That's the way we wanted it, and that's the way we did it. I am a fisherman. I was always a fisherman. I loved to fish, but when I discovered the north, I discovered a new dimension, you know, of the type of uh, river, of the landscape, of the wilderness, of the power of the George River. And I discovered also that the fish were important, but in a way secondary to the whole environment that we live in here, which shows you how tiny we are. This opens a new dimension to fishing, which is not the fish, it's the stream, and it's the power of nature. This is a feeling that I never had before. And to some clients, especially coming back from the George, they come back and it's, it's just like if they had accomplished something important in their life. Very, very, very often I had phone calls from people who were out of here and they called you back a month after and they still think about what happened to them. The North creates unique situations to everyone. It's why you, you fall in love. 
because you feel privileged. It's a place where you realize that you are alive. I think you get addicted to salmon fishing, period. It's the king of the fish. The only way to get salmon would be technique. But some people don't like salmon fishing because it's very technical and it's a thin thousand cast fish. And a lot of people like more action. They stick with the fly fishing for brookies. They don't care about casting a full day without catching a fish. They just look forward to catch that fish that they want. isolated all year long around here there's no roads and people got to come up here by plane and everything so everyone that walks through our doors stranger or not is something special for us you get to meet very very special people up here the northern beat is slower than the city beat Nobody's rushed by traffic or stuff. You gotta live by the speed of nature. Basically, that's what life's all about. You meet good people. It's a true privilege to have access to this part of the planet. 
You can travel all over the world and even in South America. Big mountains are accessible by car. We don't have that, so we had an exclusive area, unaccessible. The only way to get there was by plane or helicopter, which makes it quite unique, actually. The salmon fishing is the number one thing, making everybody want to move that far. And I think the strength of the northern fish have something to do with it. The fight you get out of a northern salmon is nothing like the fight that you'll get from any fish around the world. My father and my uncle's vision of outfitting out here was different from all the others. They showed up here as true outdoorsmen. They had been here before just for themselves, hunting for caribou, being dropped off by themselves in the middle of nowhere. And they had this vision in the 80s coming up with catch and release policies, which everybody thought they were crazy. They knew to start with that they had something very special in their hands. And they wanted to protect it, and they managed to do it for 35 years. Got to prove what catch and release can do in an environment like Northern Quebec. The reaction that I saw for many of my clients, I think the impact of landing their first salmon was bigger than the impact of uh, someone shooting his first caribou. So some of them I had to take out of the water and uh, lie down, sit down, relax. Well, let's go back to camp, you're gonna take a break and then we'll be back later on. But like if you have won a big huge fight with the king of the fish. I think it's all about the experience. You get to see stuff no one else will ever get to see. There's a very limited time frame of operation in northern Quebec and limited slots, fishing rods per week that we can offer or that anybody else can offer. At the end of the day, if you get lucky enough to get one of those rods, you're gonna end up seeing stuff that nobody else will.
anything you, you wish to accomplish in northern Quebec and in Angava needs a whole lot of planning and logistics. We basically spend 10 months a year planning a two-month fishing operation. The payoff is not the trips we sell. Flying out to the lodge and seeing six or seven guests on the beach waiting for their flight out with smiles all the way to their ears. There's no money in the world to describe the feeling of accomplishment that comes with all the work and planning we put into a season and then seeing somebody actually realizing how much work we put into this after all this time. And the same thing for my uncle and my dad. We naturally want everyone to have a good time. We're very lucky we have a very strong family. And I think this makes this operation so true to ourselves and to the guests. Our attitude towards the people, I think, probably shows that we love what we do. I have 35 years completed here, and I still love what I do. 